Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, let your will be done through us. Amen. Amen. I have a friend who lives in a really nice neighborhood. Last year, a new family moved in next door. And my friend was offended when his new neighbor began, pri began parking her pricey SUV on the corner of his lawn. Yes, the neighbor did this routinely, forcing my friend to buy a truckload of those big heavy rocks and outline the perimeter of his property to keep that rude neighbor from parking on his lot. Well, one day when I was visiting my friend, I was with a group of other people, and my friend told us this story, and he also told us how when he was driving down the street, he would wave to this neighbor, and this neighbor wouldn't wave back. And he concluded his argument by saying, boy, what a rude person. Well, that's when another member of the group spoke up, and she said, well, that's strange because I've run into her at the grocery store, and her and her family, they're actually pretty nice people. You know them, said my friend. Well, yeah. And she went on to say that the family had just immigrated from another country and their knowledge of language and of customs was, was growing. And then she asked my friend, the neighbor, she asked him, well, have you ever met your next door neighbor, that rude neighbor? My fr friend had to humbly admit that he'd not. He'd not gone over next door to welcome the family of the community. He'd not gone over to introduce himself. He didn't even go over when the parking on the lawn was going on. And my friend wondered if the rude neighbor actually knew she was being rude. Well, that's the work of a Georgetown Business School professor named Dr. Christine Porath, P-O-R-A-T-H. She writes extensively about the cause and effects of bad behavior. She's got a great TED Talk out, written a lot of books and articles on this idea. And she says that 80% of rude behavior is not understood or meant to be offensive by the purveyor. Honestly, they usually don't know they're being offensive or rude. And so listen to that. That means that when, when, when we cut people off, when we interrupt them, when we cut in, when we park on our neighbor's lawn, we usually have no idea we're being offensive. So my friend went next door, he introduced himself, and he discovered indeed this family had just emigrated from another country and was getting to know the language and the mores and had no idea that their behavior had come across as rude or distasteful. Now this story comes to mind, my friends, this morning. As you and I contemplate these challenging words of Jesus that we find in our gospel, Jesus tells us to love not just the people who love us, our family and friends, but to those who we may not know or even like. On this weekend, when you and I commemorate the founding of the most diverse nation on the face of the earth, we're taking the time to know, to listen, to understand one another, where that is really, really important. We think how important that is to our individual lives and to our lives as a nation to really get to know our neighbors, to be kind, as Jesus seems to insinuate, to be humble, to be forgiving, to be accepting, to be even be loving and assertively so towards those who we don't know, who aren't like us, who are different than us. And so my sermon title and my topic, I designed it to help us take something away. Don't you like to go to sermon and take something away? And so I just have four words for you that I hope you can take away this week. And here they are. Answer rudeness with kindness. Answer rudeness with kindness. I was in a grocery store a couple weeks ago. I had my three-year-old perched on my shoulders, as he likes to do. Balance is pretty good. At one, he was more wobbly, Play-Doh. Three, he's holding on. Kind of not even holding on half the time, because he's, you know, he likes to dance. And so th this elderly woman came up to me, this complete stranger. And she says to me, she stops me on my cart, in front of a lot of people, and she says, you better take that boy down off your shoulders. That's a long way for him to fall, and it, unless you hold on him with both those legs, he's going to tumble off his, your head, and he's going to crack his head open on that floor. Now, my first instinct, as yours might be, was to feel a bit off-put by a stranger who tries to give a parent unsolicited advice on child-rearing, especially amidst a crowd of people. But I paused and hesitated because I remembered some sage advice. And that's this. In the initial moments of personal offense, 
don't do these three things. Talk, text, or type. Got that? In the midst of a personal offense, do not talk, text, or type. Somebody here may have needed to hear that today as we respond to flaming emails, crazy drivers, rude relatives. Take a breath. Don't talk, text, or type. And then these words came. Answer rudeness with kindness. And so I looked at that lady, I took my breath, and, and I said to her, boy, I am so happy to live in a place where somebody as conscientious of other people, especially most vulnerable, is here in the grocery store to help give some advice. Thank you so much for sharing from your abundant wisdom of a parent of three who has no idea to hold on to a kid on his shoulders. No, I didn't go there. But I did say thank you, and off she went with her cart on her merry way, happy that she had changed the world. Friends, answer rudeness with kindness. We are to throw water, not gasoline, on these sparks of anger and dissension that flare up in our worlds. We are to be calm and understanding in the midst of fiery outbursts and flaming antagonisms. Our job is not to get defensive and retaliate. Our job is to get offensively thoughtful and tolerant. Answer rudeness with kindness. And if you're wondering why we're rude to one another and why these days we seem to run into it more often, well, experts say the big reason is directly related to stress that we're all feeling more and more of, hopefully on the coattails of COVID, in the midst of political rancor, et cetera, et cetera. The more worried we are, the more apt we are to treat others badly. What's more, when we encounter rude behavior, it can, can really affect our judgment and our outlook, and it can affect us for a little while. Dr. Porath, I mentioned her earlier, she once did a study on this. She took two groups of people. The first had an encounter with a rude person. The second didn't. And then these two groups were asked to think of, of as many ways as they could be inventive, inventive and imaginative with a brick. Okay, simple question. One group had gone through kind of a harassing situation where they'd been the victims of bad behavior. The other group hadn't been. And they were asked, what would you do with a brick? Well, the group that did not have an encounter with bad behavior said, you know, you could use bricks for a lot of things. You can build a house. You can, you can pave a walkway. Why, why, you could even make a sculpture out of a brick. But the group of people who had encountered the rude behavior came up with some really disturbing ideas. Things like using a brick to conk somebody on the head. Using a brick to tie it around their ankle and throw them in a river, right? Using a brick to, 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 to trip somebody while they're walking. In other words, rudeness affects us in the moment and after the moment and after the moment and after the moment. It can ruin our day, friends. Our job is to certainly understand how this affects us, but also how should we respond to rudeness when it's done to us? How do we shun the temptation towards vengeance and allow our better angels to triumph, to answer rudeness with kindness. Jesus said, you have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Now, if you're like me, you may have trouble actually naming an enemy, right? Naming a true enemy. Now, the only thing I think of is Ohio State. I hey, mean, hey. That, that, would be, that would be about it. <laughs> but 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 seriously, if you if you're like me, you know that word enemy and it implies like hatred and nefarious opposition, which is rare for me to feel. Therefore, that can make this passage seem somewhat distant, because I have a hard time coming up with like a bona fide enemy. But instead, I'm going to ask you: Can you name somebody who's just rude, impolite, abrasive, hard to get along? I'm getting a lot of uh hums back here from the <laughs> the, 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 the Greek chorus. And maybe your wheels are turning. Now we can think of, oh, that jerk of a neighbor, that selfish coworker, that lying politician, that difficult in-law, that entitled sibling. Shall I go on? Those are the people we're supposed to love. Maybe they're not enemies, folks, but close enough. In other words, name somebody rude or hard to get along with and love them or at least tolerate them. Don't allow their bad behavior to steal your good disposition or, and, or our attempts, of course, to help repair the world, which only comes, 
only comes, Dr. King famously said, the only way to make your enemy your friend is to love them. Kindness, thoughtfulness, just be nice. I never thought I'd have to preach that. But in the world that we live in, folks, we are compounded with rudeness and bad behavior. Answer rudeness with kindness. Now, one of my common reactions to rudeness is to think of how I observe it in other people, right? Oh, there's a rude person, there's something, there's some bad behavior. But I think Jesus' words also challenge us to think of the ways that we may be rude. How are we purveyors of bad behavior ourselves? As we remember that 80% of the time, rude people don't know they're being rude. That includes you and me. So I'm gonna read off a list of statements right now. And I want you to pause, and I want you to give this a chance to sink in. As I ask you to contemplate, acknowledging rudeness in ourselves, folks, is a way to bless other people. Our own self-knowledge is so important. And we do this by being aware of the ways that we may not be as kind or as loving as we want to be. So let me ask you a few of these. I'll pause in between. Do you neglect saying please or thank you? Do you use email when face-to-face -face is needed? Do you take too much credit for collaborative work? Do you keep people waiting needlessly? Do you text or email during meetings? Do you talk down to others in front of them or behind their backs? Do you fail to apologize when you've offended somebody? Do you fail to acknowledge others? Do you pass the blame when you've contributed to a mistake? Do you belittle others non-verbally? Anybody spread rumors? Do you retreat into your e-gadget? Are you disrespectful in disagreeing? Do you avoid looking out for others? Do you interrupt others? Do you speak unkindly of others? An interesting study was done at a hospital in Israel. It was not long ago. Researchers wanted to know how rudeness, how bad behavior affected productivity. And so they charted the behavior of various surgical teams in this particular hospital. And they split these teams into two groups. One group included teams that got along pretty well. They respected one another. They behaved civilly. They behaved orderly. And the second group was made up of teams where bickering and disrespect were not uncommon. On these teams, members were scared to make mistakes because they were afraid of being punished. So they withheld information, didn't share as much as they should. And it turned out that the outcomes of the teams in the second group really suffered. They had less positive patient outcomes, more, posit more post-operation problems, and their overall performance regarding patient care was measurably lower. Friends, civility pays off in our work lives. We're in cases like this, the stakes are life and death. But it also pays off in our home lives, in the everyday ways you and I move through the world. Putting more respect and forgiveness and kindness into the world, well, it pays dividends. So friends, let us choose kindness over rudeness. And let me close with the words of a writer named Russ Roberts who says this. At the end of the day, you and I never know the full story. So be kind. Cut those around you some slack. Getting through life is hard. Others look like ducklings crossing a pond. They look like they're skating effortlessly along. But they, like you and me, are furiously paddling below, struggling with all kinds of things that are concealed. So be kind. Don't bear a grudge. Don't keep score. Give people around you the benefit of the doubt. Wag more, bark less. You'll be happier for it, and the people around you will enjoy your company all the more. Answer rudeness with kindness. Amen.